Uh, that was, of course, Saturday Night Live having some fun with Colorado's new pot law. Just this week, that state made headlines for granting the world's first recre recreational marijuana retail license. I shouldn't say the world's first, certainly America's first. Pot shops in Colorado will be opening their doors this January. Washington State will follow their lead starting sales this spring. The move is leading to a so-called green rush. Business people from very different backgrounds hoping to make a killing off the budding industry. Cecilia Sievertson is a former paralegal. She is the owner of uh, Nana Secret. It's a company that produces cannabis-infused soda. Angel Swanson is a real estate agent, also the owner of the Cannabis Foundation. And Molly Poissett is a pastry chef who develops recipes for recreational and medical use. Ladies, it's good to see all of you. Thank Hi, you. how Thank are you? you. Angel, you. Angel you, you've been described as the poster child for anti-cannabis, a mother of seven right. who grew up with a strong bias against illegal drugs, um, what led to, to rethinking your position on pot? Uh, family circumstances. We had, um, in February, my husband actually asked me of that year that we first opened, uh, if I wanted to open, he thought it would be a gold rush, and I, and I absolutely not. Uh, but we had a child, we have a, uh, one of our daughters who has always had digestive issues, who was, had scholarship into college, and uh, we discovered that she wasn't taking her medication, she was actually eating uh, marijuana lace cookies uh, to help her appetite. And uh, for the first time I'd ever seen her put on some weight, and I asked her, I said, wow, that medicine you're taking from the doctor is working great. And she gives me the smirk that only, you know, <laughs> mom would pick up, right? And, and, you know, I'm stopping and I realize that I haven't... I didn't buy medicine for her from, from her prescription for quite a while. Yeah. And so she owned up, you know, this is, this is what's going on, and I lost it. I mean, <laughs> I really lost it. And I spent a lot of time uh, researching why this extremely intelligent child should not be doing what she was doing. And frankly, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any real substantive answers to say to her, don't do this. All I could find was why she should. And, and so I, I began the journey of changing my mind. 21 states in the District of Columbia now have laws legalizing marijuana in, in some shape, form, or fashion. Colorado and Washington State uh, so far right. the only states that have made it legal for recreational use. Molly, uh, again, you, uh, you've started a, a pastry business out there. What, what are some of the other businesses? What are some of the other businesses that are starting to pop up with regards to pot? Um, well, in Seattle, there's quite a variety of different businesses that are um, going to be applying for their uh, license for recreational mm -hmm. marijuana. But, um, you know, Cecilia, for example, is uh, going to be doing sodas and uh, different types of topical uh, creams that will help people with their pain. Uh, for me, because I'm a recently graduated from Le Cordon Bleu Paris, and um, I decided because I had a daughter who survived a stem cell transplant that I wanted to help people who suffer from um, immune deficiency um, disorders and people who are uh, in pain to help them by being able to create pastries and chocolates that are edibles that will help them uh, through um, their difficult times. Has, and so, has the business community so far there, has it, has it been fairly welcoming? Yes, um, I am a new transplant to Seattle. I moved here just about five months ago and people are very welcoming here and um, they're very receptive, um, broad-minded and understand that cannabis has uh, benefits for people in pain and medicinal benefits and uh, that's why I believe the right. three of us are here. Well, and, and, and I'm sorry. No, uh, go ahead. Businesses here, um, it depends on the businesses you're talking about. Now, some are very open. If it's a cannabis-based industry, we, we are all very much a l very large family. Yeah. Uh, but those who are not quite in the industry who are on that edge, we need so much more participation. We need realtors. We need bankers. We need CPAs. We need... Uh, just a wide variety. I mean, we have staffing issues. We have all the issues that a regular business would have, but we don't have access to a lot of those services. Cecilia, you know, successful entrepreneurs in this country obviously are, are the ones that, that, that take risk. Is this too big of a risk? 
uh, depends on uh, what kind of risk you want to take. You, um, my business, I started out taking customers from my label company. Um, some of them want their names known, some of them don't. Um, there's ways to work around that. I looked at the customers that I wanted to use to provide my sodas. They were willing to help me out by providing the sodas for me. Um, I'm going to work with other customers in the cannabis industry to put in Nana Secret Soda Shop um, and the is companies that, that, that don't really, want to be that, involved in the cannabis industry. Um, they just simply provide me with the products that I need. It's not really much of a secret though what's in the soda, is it? Um, Nana has a new <laughs> secret every day and you just have to wait till tomorrow to find out what those secrets are today. Oh, that's, that's, that's quite the tease there. Molly, Molly, where are we 10 years from now with regards to the cannabis industry? And not just necessarily in Colorado or Washington State. Well, my hope is, and um, it is my belief, that um, nationally it is in our best interest to fully legalize cannabis. And for people that are suffering to be able to uh, use it as a medicine to their own benefit uh, with the assistance of a doctor if they need be, or that people that want to recreate instead of alcohol, if they would like to uh, enjoy marijuana or cannabis, um, that they should be able to do that. It's certainly um, a very, uh, on many levels, it's very safe and um, you do not have the same levels of um, uh, domestic violence with people who uh, consume marijuana or cannabis as you do uh, with uh, problematic um, consumption of alcohol. So, I personally prefer to drink a glass of wine myself, <laughs> um, but I, I encourage people that if that is their form of self-medication, um, that it is beneficial for them. Cecilia Sieverton, Angel Swanson, Molly Poissette. Ladies, keep, keep, us, keep us posted on your, uh, what's, what's probably going to be uh, quite the successful business out there in Colorado. Thank you. Well, we're in Washington, Thank you yes. so much. Yes. Thank we you very much time. for having us today. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, it's all day live, and uh, I can see behind me, or you can, I hope you can, um, that's Nana's Secret Sodas, and that's probably a soda in there behind me somewhere in that door right there. And I think if everybody wants to, they can probably, I, I'm not the person who knows how to find that except on the internet. And it is Nana's Secret. There's two S's, Nana's Secret dot com, just so you know that. And we'll find out what's behind these doors here in just a second, let alone the fact that's how you can get to these doors. That's how I got there. Uh, I want to get there too, because I'm really interested in Nana Secret Sodas, there's something about cannabis, and I'm going to find out here in just a second from the, the professor that came up with this idea. I think her name is Cecilia, and I think she's got some advising help right now from a person that came up with the old Toby strain. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm Will P. Wilson, by the way, you know that. And we're about to hear from Cecilia and Matthew, and Cecilia Sievertson, Cecilia, it's really good to see you. And Matthew, it's, it's good to see you as well. And Cecilia, what's behind my door behind us? Um, the door is actually not open yet. We'll be opening later, next few days, I hope. Behind it, we'll have five different flavors of soda. We'll have some baked medibles, some candies, and some new products coming very soon. Wow. Uh, we're going to be working with Matthew. He's coming up with some, uh, hopefully, new strains for our sodas for children with epilepsy, or I should say, hopefully, children. Um, we're looking forward to inviting some mothers from across the country to bring their children out here to learn about uh, products that we're going to be working on for them. Uh, and uh, Matthew, talk about that a little bit. Um, well, we've, we know that there's non-psychoactive compounds that the, the cannabis plant produces, such as CBD, that there's no discernible high, there's no munchies, there's no tiredness or grogginess or... Um, uh, there's no intoxication or inebriation. We don't get the paranoid. We don't get um, effects. We don't get the uh, confusing effects, which would be harmful on a child's developing brain. Um, just the CBD they need to um, suppress the uh, peripheral nervous system and, uh, and disallow the, uh, the seizure from, from happening. 
And so um, now we're finding there's other compounds created in the, in the cannabis plant that um, might be more beneficial than CBD for epilepsy. And we know are beneficial for Parkinson's, MS, edema, um, any inflammation, uh, memory, improved memory, vision, hearing, and um, anti-cancer um, chemicals or drugs that the plant's producing. It's very, very exciting. We're starting to separate the, the chemicals that cause the high and the stone effects from the medicinally useful chemicals. So that's, the, uh, in a nutshell, the importance of the future of this alternative medicine, this safer alternative, non, non-lethal form of uh, alternative medicine. The um, product that Matthew brought to me earlier today to try, because I do make my own medicine, because I have epilepsy, so I tested it today for myself, and um, maybe I used a little bit too much because it did make my head not feel quite as well, but compared to the medicine that I have been making, um, the best thing I could say about it was it had no psychoactive effect, and so far I've had a very good day. I haven't had any tremors that I normally have when I first get up in the morning, and um, so tomorrow I will try the medicine again with half the dosage and, and I'll continue to try Matthew's medicine throughout the next week with different dosages amounts t- until I get the correct dosage. And then I will continue with his medicine um, probably up until the event in May. So I have um, a good line of um, feedback. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, so my, cause my, one of my dreams has always been old Toby soda. Um, because it, it seems to be a really good delivery system. When I ate uh, cookies before, it took um, longer to affect me, but the, cause with the carbonation, um, and all the, it seems to, to, to kick in right away. And also the people with the kidney problems and bladder problems, for some reason when it's bonded with uh, water soluble like the glycerin, which is uh, one, of the, one of the ways that um, you can infuse cannabis for sodas. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to be very, very beneficial at organ rejuvenation. At least the, the CBN, um, uh, high CBN um, uh, the phenotype of old Toby, tongue tied. But um, it's just, it's really exciting. And um, to, to think that um, I could, old, the old Toby strain with the negative side effects bred out could be incorporated into a, into a soda uh, because there's many different medical, if you, if you are, um, need appetite, appetite stimulating um, substances or stuff to help you sleep, um, we're, all of us in, in medical cannabis are, are trying, to, trying to pin down the chemicals that have individualized effects and very, very close to many of these. So, um, and I'm hoping my single trait enhancement will greatly help because if we can breed a strain that has an individual effect, then we'll be able to reverse engineer it and find out the exact chemicals because it's not about, it's not like, oh, CBCA, now we know what makes you sleep. CBD, now we know what makes you hungry or THC, now we know what makes you confused or something. It's, it's really not that simple. That's like saying, your brain works by serotonin only or something. Uh-huh. There's hundreds of chemicals in the brain and there's a hundred chemicals in the cannabis that react to your body's physiology. Uh-huh. And so, but if we can get a map of this key, this chemical key that this chemical factory that we call cannabis is producing uh, by creating a strain that is a hundred percent more hungry effect with the other effects bred out and a hundred percent more, maybe more confused and more paranoid effect strains, you know, and um, going about this through standardized F1 to F7 hybridization, which all the cannabis strains to date have been created in this way, uh, it's a very, very slow process. And if you breed for a trait, a, a different trait, it's throwing you off. Like, let's say the um, paranoid effect has to do with potency or the um, confusing effect is connected with the yield of the plant. 
So maybe there's a big giant yield plant, but it makes you really confused. And so every time you breed for yield or potency, you're breeding to make it more paranoid or confused. You're breeding in, the, in these negative side effects inadvertently because we don't know the genetic trait groups that are connected to the medical effectiveness of the plant yet. We haven't, I'm the first one to even, just some patient, I'm the first one to even identify these as hungry, tired, confused, paranoid, and anti-inflammatory, antidepressant. So anyway, it's kind of exciting um, to have a soda pop <laughs> that you can drink that's effective for MS, Parkinson's, edema, lupus. We're hoping, for me, what's the most exciting part? A, so, a soda pop that a lot of, that's available to a lot of patients. That way, it's, you, nobody runs out. You can always get it. And that um, epilepsy, that's the, the next hurdle. I want a better treatment for epilepsy. I think there has to be something better than CBD. And something that, what, and, 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 and mainly, we, wanna, we don't want people getting stoned. We don't want them intoxicated. We don't want them inebriated, you know, especially like children or, um, you know, we, those parts of the brain need to be developed properly um, without, they don't need to develop their brains being paranoid or confused. They need to be very clear headed and completely straight. In fact, it'd be nice to give them an edge. Yeah, I'm really you know, excited about increase that. Increase oxygen to the brain and blood flow, all right? All day long, my head has been totally clear. I haven't had any psychoactive effect mm -hmm. and I just feel good, you know, the, I have had no nausea, I've had no tremors, no shaky. The normal uh, issues that I have with my epilepsy have been totally gone all day long. So I, I feel really good about it. It's that. just, it gives me goosebumps. <laughs> it really does, because I mean. I've been looking for a strain that I can feel <laughs> comfortable knowing that if I have the strain to work with for my sodas, that this is a possibility of a product for children. So I'm Absolutely, excited and, about working and, with this. and we can stay within the federal guidelines. If they say 0 0.03 THC per whatever, per, per, um, uh, per container, whatever, then we, uh, with Old Toby, I think it's still going to be effect. There's still uh, chemical composition in there that's medically effective mm -hmm. at that level. And um, we don't know yet, but that's what I'm hoping for. It's pretty exciting. Let me put it this way. No. If no. you see Old Every Toby, morning. Nana's sodas, right? No, no, Nana's no. secret Nana's sodas. Secret. If you see Nana's Secret, Old Toby, that means it's working, that the patient trials are coming back. It's if 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 you don't see it, then you it, know we it, tried. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, it did. It just didn't pass our personal research study this time, but we'll we're still trying. working. Yeah, because it's, I believe it's within our grasp to create these individual, medically useful strains with no side effects whatsoever. Which is the same, and even if we can just get close uh, genetically, was, then we can do the rest with extracting and infusions, and that's really the future right there. I mean, it's. I've been using uh, cannabis in my soda myself for over almost a year now, and I know that I'm getting great results myself. So I feel certain that it's going to be a good product. I've had before. I had Old Toby. I used the normal strains of cannabis that were available to me to me from the medical um, community. And um, my um, cirrhosis of the liver is gone. I got a fatty liver. I had 79% scar tissue, three years to live 10 years ago. And I'm completely healed from regular old, there was no old Toby, just regular Cannab cannabis. Can so now that we've got cannabis with these negative side effects bred out that with the medical effectiveness enhanced, it's just exciting. It's almost too hard to believe. It's almost too good to believe, really, for us people in cannabis. But anyway, sorry. Can I can I insert real quick, uh, Cecilia? This is well. I want to ask you real quick. Uh, cannabis is in the drink, right? Yes. Yeah, and it's about the only one in North America. Am I right at this time? There really isn't anybody there else. There are a couple of other companies. I'm not the only one, but the other ones are. The, I'm the only carbonated soda. Wow. Wow. Uh, and we're looking at old Toby. Is that a secret? Being in it. That's what I'm hoping Sorry. because that's a dream of mine is to have old Toby soda. And like, I, I mean, I had a good example, a good analogy. I had an album, a CD, a jazz CD. It's pretty good. You know, there's no vocals for what it is. I mean, it's a good CD, but three people have heard it and no one's going to hear it. If, if it was shoved down 100, 200 million people's throats on the radio every single day, Maybe 500,000 people would buy it or 100,000 or something, right? 
but it has to be promoted. And that's not my job. I don't know how, I even how to begin promoting a CD. I don't know how to make soda pop. I don't know how to have a soda company or a dispensary or anything, but I do have a strain that's very, very medically effective at very, very low doses where the THC, we could even, I don't know, maybe if we have to extract some THC and make it really, you know, a child or a... That was going to be my other question to you is how do you make your tincture? Um, 180 how, degrees. What you, no, what do you, how do you extract your, uh, how do you do your extraction? With the, the, the for uh, the your glycerin. Plant. The oil from your plant. From, from the glycerin? Whole bud, whole plant. But do you 180 have an degrees? extraction machine? No, pots, I stir it and stir it and, and then when it gets 180 almost to 200 degrees, I'll turn it off and let it cool and, and then turn it back on and stir it for 72 hours, 180 degrees. Material? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Whole plant material. And you just cook it on the stove? Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. With just... with the Toby, the other stuff, you uh, people do keef and they'll do infusions or whatever. Um, uh, glycerin's really not the most effective. People are like, oh, you still do that. Coconut's better and grapeseed oil's better and uh, Simpson oil is really, really good. That's the ethanol so extraction. So you can just cook the plant material with glycerin. They're yeah. Like, oh, you should do like CO2 extraction, or you should do ethanol extraction. That changes it. It depends. Now, do you have a plant, a strain that you specifically bred so that by the that you for medical effectiveness, so that when you extract it through CO2 specifically, now you've got just makes you hungry or you know what I'm saying if you yes if you are specific and right now I'm working on um, versions of strains specifically for extraction but right now it's it's too you could have a strain that has a certain effect and extract it now it's changed every time it's going to change it and so if you're doing that on purpose for a specific medical effect yes by all means but um, just to indiscriminately whatever I mean uh, I've found, okay, I'm the only one that's having people with kidney disease and kidney failure. Their kidneys are being restored and pancreas and liver pretty rapidly. Um, they're getting off, you know, with 7% restoration with one patient. This, I can't really name names. It sounds like a bunch of BS when you start talking about other people's mm -hmm. patient trials. But I personally know that... Um, their organs are rejuvenating. So when I'm, they had just the glands or dabs and stuff like that. I mean, nobody else in cannabis is having the success. It's something in the whole plant, uh, especially with the, with the Toby, uh, for sure. I mean, you can actually extract the, the, you could probably, I'll go so far as to say it'll screw it up, but a good way it, it you could almost make CO2 extraction with the Toby, set that aside and then take what's left over and make your glycerin with it. And it's gonna be helping seizures and, and really good treatment for Parkinson's and inflammation and MS and everything. Maybe we should do that and just reinfuse a little bit of THC, just enough to make it medically effective. But, um, or a little bit of that oil back into it, you know? But, um, yeah, absolutely, until we know, if you know what you're doing, yes, I, I but, People, the reason they say that is because they know that if you're doing a good oil extraction on it first, then you're measuring out a measured amount. You know, oh, now we know it's 75 mi milligrams per 12 ounces of THC or something. That's what they want. Um, they want, you know, because so many people, you can take, a, it's 45 bucks a pound or something for leaf, and you can just wash it and sell cannabis tea or something. It's non and it's literally like what's left over from bubble ash or something. And people try it and it's medically useful and get some high and they're not mad that they spent five, five bucks on it and it didn't taste bad. But it's kind of, everyone's doing that. They're just washing leaves or whatever. But if you take oil and infuse it, then you know you got 100 milligram of medicine or your gummy bear, whatever sodas or anything. That's pretty much why they said that because there's, it, it gets rid of the ripoffs. But Toby's different. I mean, it's a very, very limited amount of this plant with this totally different 
Um, I've given everyone free samples. There's tons of patients that have tried it. Um, best best medible ever, you know. And I've had tests come back to as little as 0.1 THC per. I don't know what it even was, but it was very weak. And everyone said best ever. So um, there's something else happening. There's the, the the entourage helper chemicals that the plant's producing in the Toby. Uh, it's beyond anything that you'd actually get out in a... I've made butane honey oil out of Toby, and it didn't help my memory at all. It didn't... Butane gets me a headache. Yeah, I didn't... It wasn't medically effective. The whole... I've, I've actually rolled joints of the leaf that was left over from the BHO extract, and about two-thirds of the way through, my memory was back. But the BHO, I'd smoke about seven hits, and I felt like a really good, clear-headed sativa high. It was, but I mean, seven hits of dabs. I mean, you know, yeah. That's you'd think, a lot. yeah, and it's, it was, we came back really super high THC. But there was literally, in fact, you know what? I'm going to go, maybe that is medically beneficial. Medically beneficial, you know what I mean? It just, it didn't, it took a lot for me to get high off it, but I don't know. It didn't really help my memory either. I don't know. It's, there's a lot more questions and answers. This is kind of, I, that's it. I'm, I'm just excited. I want to get it in a soda. Hey, Matthew, I was going to ask you this as well uh, real quick. Um, if uh, we're looking at this being the first kind of old Toby, and, and it's going to be interesting because you're looking at it being a medical strain too, right? Eventually, sort of. I mean, something like that's going to prevail. It'll be more than just a soda. I right. can see Matthew working uh, with nanas, not only at, in the sodas, but as a consultant throughout the nana business, because nana just doesn't have the knowledge that Matthew has, and it's something that I'm going to need throughout my business. Okay, really good. So it's going to get into a diversity of things. And then Matthew, as and you have... that's what he wants to do. Well, <laughs> I'm, I, yeah. It's like you're going to be kind of... No, absolutely. Well, no, I, I don't see... A problem with that at all? Because uh, it sounds. See, I'm on a path to get medication to patients, and uh, you're on the same path. Yeah. So if there's no friction, there's no conflict whatsoever. Um, we just keep doing what you keep doing, what you're doing every day, and I keep doing what I'm every I do every day, and all of a sudden, patients are going to have really good medication, a safer treatment for a more effective treatment. That's what we really, we're really looking for, a more effective anti-inflammatory, more effective sleep aid, more effective um, for antidepressant, um, edema, MS, arthritis, Parkinson's, hopefully um, epilepsy. Yeah, because I can't. Don't know yet. I can do what I'm doing without you, but I can do what I'm doing better with you. And kind of the same thing for you. Yeah, I could. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could bottle sodas in my house. I could go to the brew place and get cases of sodas and crank those yeah. caps on and sanitize stuff and old yeah. Toby Snake Oil Soda or whatever. Yeah. But um, you yeah, could. that's not my. I'm too busy to do that. Yeah. I'm way too busy to do that. Yeah. Just I'm t no. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that'd be great if we can hopefully get together on this. Yeah. Um, it's just a process. Everything has to be right legal. Now. Everything has to be um, legit. You know, that way yep. everyone's happy and there's no harm done. I don't know. We have people <laughs> Nervous. That, we have people who do that stuff for us. Right. And we'll just do what we do. Yeah, I, I'm creating medical strains. Um, you want to see what I do? I'm a crazy see what person. what I'm doing right now? <laughs> You're Nana. <laughs> Nana's secret <laughs> spokesperson. I, I was going to mention real quick, we've got about three and a half minutes left. Uh, uh, Cecilia and Matthew, um, how would somebody get a hold of the company and they want to sell it somewhere? You know. uh, Nana's secret sodas are currently being sold in dispensaries throughout Seattle. And uh, if you are interested in... Um, Finding any of those dispensaries, you can email me at Cecilia at nanasecret.com uh, or you can give me a call. My phone number is um, on the screen. Right. 2425-773-8435. Yes. Right. Is that right? Matthew, because it's Matthew420 at gmail.com, right? 
Yeah. M A T one T. There's some two T'd Matthew Gordon out there that's got ten thousand emails. Like, what the heck? I don't even smoke pot. But it's M A T H E W G O R D O N four twenty at Gmail. Well, he probably smokes pot if it's four twenty at Gmail. <laughs> There's two of us. One guy gets more emails than me because he's got two T's in his name. Um, but I'm what, the one T, Matthew. Tell us a little about your music. You've got an album up, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon right now. It's called Matthew Gordon, Old Toby. I don't know why they named it that. Um, I had nothing to do with the naming of the album, the naming of the songs, or the cover. But um, it's actually good music, especially in your grow room or while you're trimming uh, or making butter or, or, or tinctures or whatever. It's really good music to just have playing on a loop. So you go to Amazon.com, Matthew Gordon, jazz. It's a jazz album. And it's $4.99 to download it. I downloaded it. Uh, it was rated four and a half stars out of five so far. Um, 21st Century News gave it a high rating. So yeah, there it is right there. So you just go to Amazon and you can check out for free like 30 seconds of each song. There's five songs. It's 40 minutes. And um, I enjoy the heck out of it. I mean, I played on it, but it's, um, uh, I like it. You know, I like my own strains and I like wow. my own songs. But uh, it's kind of irrelevant, you know. Just go ahead and you listen to it and see if you like it. He likes my soda, too. Yeah. Oh, it's, that's delicious. That What was that? That was... Blue cream. No, that's blue really, cream. Really, 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 really good, so. Okay, I appreciate this, and I really am honored, Cecilia, to be here to have you today on our program. I really am honored. Thank and Matthew, you very that, much. we got your contact information. And Cecilia, we got you right here. And by the way, we opened with this show with a uh, video that was on CNBC, right? MSNBC Live. MSNBC, okay. Uh, and I think I bring it up here real quick. It was in the background here. It was that links there. That's it right there. And I think we've got it playing. Actually, they can watch it. And uh, a lot happened after you were on national television, which yes. in a sense you're on public and national right now. But yes, thank you very much for having me. Greatly honored. And um, we've got this information. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you're opening a door. You're opening a big door. As it's behind you. It's a big one. And it's the, one of the first doors. Am I right? Like you said, soda. Uh, it, it bubbles. The Bubbly. Bubblers. Right? Huge door in Seattle and soon, hopefully, across the country. Yeah. Matthew, I think Grab we can fight. Are, are we going to be an old Toby soda probably sooner or later? That's Nana's old Toby, I think. I, I want to have an old Toby soda yeah. very soon. Yeah. I think we got that information. We appreciate everyone. Well, it'd be a, it would be a medicated cannabis soda with the, the munchies, the, the tiredness, the grogginess, the paranoid, and the confusing negative side effects absent. So it's and just no anti-inflammatory. Psycho, no psychoactive effect whatsoever. Right. So you just, the inflammation's gone, the seizures reduced, the vision's better, the hearing, the memory, um, the pain that's associated with inflammation without the, uh, without the stoned, intoxicating, inebriating effects commonly associated with pot. So that would be great, you know, uh, a soda that, I mean, and, and the Parkinson's and the MS and the arthritis is managed. Thank you, you guys. I'm greatly honored. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. Really no, appreciate it. Thanks for being on All Day Live. And we'll probably get you on. Again, more people want to know more about this. It's going to get bigger Thank and bigger you. and bigger, right?
Uh, that was, of course, Saturday Night Live having some fun with Colorado's new pot law. Just this week, that state made headlines for granting the world's first recre recreational marijuana retail license. I shouldn't say the world's first, certainly America's first. Pot shops in Colorado will be opening their doors this January. Washington State will follow their lead starting sales this spring. The move is leading to a so-called green rush. Business people from very different backgrounds hoping to make a killing off the budding industry. Cecilia Sievertson is a former paralegal. She is the owner of uh, Nana Secret. It's a company that produces cannabis-infused soda. Angel Swanson is a real estate agent, also the owner of the Cannabis Foundation. And Molly Poissette is a pastry chef who develops recipes for recreational and medical use. Ladies, it's good to see all of you. Thank Hi, you. thank you. you. Angel, you. Angel you, you've been described as the poster child for anti-cannabis, a mother of seven right. who grew up with a strong bias against illegal drugs, um, what led to, to rethinking your position on pot? Uh, family circumstances. We had, um, in February, my husband actually asked me of that year that we first opened, uh, if I wanted to open, he thought it would be a gold rush, and I, and I absolutely not. Uh, but we had a child, we have a, uh, one of our daughters who has always had digestive issues, who was had scholarship into college, and uh, we discovered that she wasn't taking her medication, she was actually eating uh, marijuana lace cookies uh, to help her appetite. And uh, for the first time I'd ever seen her put on some weight, and I asked her, I said, wow, that medicine you're taking from the doctor is working great. And she gives me the smirk that only, you know, <laughs> mom would pick up, right? And, and you know, I'm stopping and I realized I haven't... I didn't buy medicine for her from, from her prescription for quite a while. Yeah. And so she owned up, you know, this is, this is what's going on, and I lost it. I mean, <laughs> I really lost it. And I spent a lot of time uh, researching why this extremely intelligent child should not be doing what she was doing. And frankly, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find any real substantive answers to say to her, don't do this. All I could find was why she should. And, and so I, I began the journey of changing my mind. 21 states in the District of Columbia now have laws legalizing marijuana in, in some shape, form, or fashion. Colorado and Washington State uh, so far right. the only states that have made it legal for recreational use. Molly, uh, again, you, uh, you've started a, a pastry business out there. What, what are some of the other businesses? What are some of the other businesses that are starting to pop up with regards to pot? Um, well, in Seattle, there's quite a variety of different businesses that are um, going to be applying for their uh, license for recreational marijuana. But, um, you know, Cecilia, for example, is uh, going to be doing sodas and uh, different types of topical uh, creams that will help people with their pain. Uh, for me, because I'm a recently graduated from Le Cordon Bleu Paris, and um, I decided because I had a daughter who survived a stem cell transplant that I wanted to help people who suffer from um, immune deficiency um, disorders and people who are uh, in pain to help them by being able to create pastries and chocolates that are edibles that will help them uh, through um, their difficult times. Has, and so, has the business community so far there, has it, has it been fairly welcoming? Yes. Um, I am a new transplant to Seattle. I moved here just about five months ago. And people are very welcoming here and um, they're very receptive, um, broad minded, and understand that cannabis has uh, benefits for people in pain and medicinal benefits. And uh, that's why I believe the right. three of us are here. Well, and, and, and I'm sorry. No, uh, go ahead. Businesses here, um, it depends on the businesses you're talking about. Now, some are very open. If it's a cannabis-based industry, we, we are all very much a very large family. Yeah. Uh, but those who are not quite in the industry who are on that edge, we need so much more participation. We need realtors. We need bankers. We need CPAs. We need... Uh, just a wide variety. I mean, we have staffing issues. We have all the issues that a regular business would have, but we don't have access to a lot of those services. Cecilia, you know, successful entrepreneurs in this country obviously are, are the ones that, that, that take risk. Is this too big of a risk? Uh, depends on uh, what kind of risk you want to take. 
you, um, my business, I started out taking customers from my label company. Um, some of them want their names known, some of them don't. Um, there's ways to work around that. I looked at the customers that I wanted to use to provide my sodas. They were willing to help me out by providing the sodas for me. Um, I'm going to work with other customers in the cannabis industry to put in Nana Secret Soda Shop um, and the is companies that, that, that don't really, want to be that, involved in the cannabis industry. Um, they just simply provide me with the products that I need. It's not really much of a secret though what's in the soda, is it? Um, Nana has a new <laughs> secret every day and you just have to wait till tomorrow to find out what those secrets are today. Oh, that's, that's, that's quite the tease there. Molly, Molly, where are we 10 years from now with regards to the cannabis industry? And not just necessarily in Colorado or Washington State. Well, my hope is, and um, it is my belief, that um, nationally it is in our best interest to fully legalize cannabis. And for people that are suffering to be able to uh, use it as a medicine to their own benefit uh, with the assistance of a doctor if they need be, or that people that want to recreate instead of alcohol, if they would like to uh, enjoy marijuana or cannabis, um, that they should be able to do that. It's certainly um, a very, uh, on many levels, it's very safe and um, you do not have the same levels of um, uh, domestic violence with people who uh, consume marijuana or cannabis as you do uh, with uh, problematic um, consumption of alcohol. So, I personally prefer to drink a glass of wine myself, <laughs> um, but I, I encourage people that if that is their form of self-medication, um, that it is beneficial for them. Cecilia Sieverton, yeah. Angel Swanson, Molly Poissette. Ladies, keep, keep, us, keep us posted on your, uh, what's, what's probably going to be uh, quite the successful business out there in Colorado. Thank you. Well, we're in Washington, Thank you yes. so much. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much time. for having us today. Thank you. Thank you.